Ciao, Europe's Strongest Man 2022 has come to a close. We have a winner, but let me give you the event by event breakdown. Starting off with event number two, because I've already made a video about the max log, which you should go watch. But event two is the deadlift ladder. So, deadlift ladder consisted of five different deadlifts a 300 kilogram, a 325, a 350, a 375 kilogram, and then a 400 kilogram bar. So uh, you would complete one deadlift and try to get to the next one as quickly as possible. Total time counts here. So one point goes to Pavlo Kordiaka, who managed three deadlifts in 48.76 seconds. He went fifth in the order versus Novikov. So they were going head to head. Uh, he was using straps. He was much more deliberate than Novikov was. And he ran out of time trying to budge the 375 kilogram. After Alexei's interview, Pablo was interviewed as well, and uh, he actually took the mic from Neil Pickup and made sure to thank the crowd for all the support for Ukraina. Uh, he gets an ovation as well, and so did Alexei Novikov. Just a lot of love for Ukraina in Europe's Strongest Man at several times throughout the show, which I'll point out, but one point to Pablo Kordiaka. He was, as you can see, in second place after event number one. This uh, total brought him down to seventh place, and we're looking at running place right here and running points. So, total of 11 points. One point in this event, seventh place. Kelvin DeRoyter uh, gets three of them in 40.5 seconds. He went first in the order versus Ivar Schmalkstellis. He was wearing straps and using them for all bars. So not everybody, <clears throat> most notably Gav Bilton, not everybody wore their straps with them. Uh, but he had them on, used them for all the bars. Struggled at the 375 and couldn't quite get it. Two points go to Kelvin DeRoyter, who was in ninth place before this event, now in 12th. Gavin Bilton did three of them in 38.4 seconds, uh, went fourth versus Shane Flowers. He was out slightly faster, but both guys were very fast through the first couple of them. Then he gets to the third, slightly after Shane, who's putting on the straps that he has already attached. As I mentioned earlier, Gav doesn't have his straps on. They're laying next to the third bar. So he tries to lift with no straps, then decides he has to go get them, put them on, and, and wasted more time than really was necessary. So I'm not sure why he didn't have his straps with him and just could elect not to use them on some bars like some guys did and just let them dangle, but he didn't. <clears throat> so three points to Gav Bilton, who was in fifth place before this event, now in ninth. Athor Ingelson Melstead went sixth versus Luke Stoltman. He did it barefoot, and uh, he was pretty fast. Athor was outperforming my expectations by this point. Kudos to Athor for really bringing it. Luke was urging him on at 375 after not trying the fifth one himself, so a lot of camaraderie there. Three deadlifts in 32.2 seconds for Athor. Good enough for four points. He was in second place before this, now in fifth place. Three deadlifts in 29.23 seconds for Ivar Schmockstellis, who went first in the order versus Kelvin De Reuter. He was wearing his straps, but didn't use them until the third bar, allowing him to get ahead of Kelvin. Uh, funny, I noticed instead of hopping over each bar after lifting, he would walk around them. So maybe costing him a little bit of time there, but, but maybe also a little safer so as not to trip. So that's probably why he was doing it. Uh, couldn't quite get the 375 kilogram, but he did finish the 350 faster than Kelvin did. So five points to Ivar Schmockstellis, who was in ninth place coming into this event, now in 11th place. Six points went to Pao Dwyer, who uh, a lot of people had big expectations of after his recent Britain's Strongest Man competition, where I believe he was second place on the podium. But this is a different set of events, so, you know, uh, expectations could change there. Pa went second versus Ron Ohanla. He was out. Way faster and not using his straps, but he can't get the 375 and just walks off. So six points to Pa O'Dwyer, who came into this event in ninth place, now in 10th place. Seven points went to Shane Flowers, who did actually very well today in a variety of different events. Uh, he went fourth versus Gav Bilton. Big hitching to get the fourth one, but could not do the fifth. He was out fast, but overtaken by Gav, but then overtake, overtook uh, Gavin back again and had his straps ready to go. As I mentioned earlier, Gab did not, and that was the difference there. Seven points to Shane Flowers. Four deadlifts in 61.03 seconds. Eight points went to Luke Stoltman, who uh, outperformed the math today. Let me tell you, he did very well. Four deadlifts in 55.21 seconds. As I mentioned, went six versus Athor Melstead, very fast through the 375. Then he calls in and cheers on it. Afterward, when he was interviewed, he said, this was easy, the log was easy, and World's Strongest Man will be easy. So, uh, big words from Luke Stolman. Nine points go to Marius Lalas, who did four in 48.2 seconds. He went third versus Konstantin Janasha. He was using straps, and he got to the last bar, but barely budged it. So, uh, fifth place coming into this event, fourth place after this event, so he didn't move up a notch. Luke Stolman, by the way, was in first after the log, obviously, and uh, still in first place after this event. 
Alexei Novikov comes away with 10 points. He went fifth in the order versus his countryman, Pavlo Kordiaka, running among these bars. I mean, he was like not trotting. He was running among these bars. Super fast strap releases too. It was like he, he was on autopilot with getting his hands out of the straps quickly. Waves it off before trying the fifth one and uh, found out the time and decided not to proceed. Kaz asked him if his inability to train strongman affected him. And Alexei says he's not been able to train like a strongman. He now trains like a soldier. And we're all aware of what's going on in Ukraine. And it was just really powerful words from him that, you know, I don't have any feelings and that even got to me. So we're all uh, wishing you the best, Alexei and Pavlo as well and, and all your countrymen and women for sure. <clears throat> Round no, Hanlon went second in the order versus Pau Dwyer. He's taking a long time getting the straps set to compensate for his grip. And uh, Pa is out way faster using no straps. Rano overtakes him, though, and uh, can't get the 400 kilogram due to the number of reps he's already done. So, you know, if this was the only one he was doing, he could do multiple reps with it. But due to the, the lead up, this is what was this was a hard ladder, which lots of the athletes said. So 11 points to Rano, who was running in ninth place coming to this event, moves up to seventh place after this event. Konstantin Janasha does 4 and 35.04 seconds. He went third versus Marius Lalas. Janasha not using straps until the last bar, so uh, really making up some good time there with his superior grip. Out much faster and was super close on locking out that last bar as well. He said this was his first time trying this, which was amazing. So he comes away with 12 points, wins the event, 4 and 35.04 seconds, was in fifth place coming into this event. And leaves this event in third place overall. So there's your winner for the deadlift ladder. Konstantin Janasha, Rano Ohanla in second, and Alexei Novikov in third. Let's have a look at what happened at the next event, the carry and drag. <laughs> 